My name is Stephen Ashley, and I'm going to be talking about digital transformation and how you can partner with the Oil and Gas Technology Center to meet your goals. So, how many people here work for an operator? Not many. Who works for an operator but actually doesn't want to admit it? Okay, does anyone work in the supply chain, SMEs? Okay, how many people are innovators? Very good. I'd have hoped a few more innovation people, but never mind. So, you know, the Oil and Gas Technology Center was set up this year. We've been running since February, and we are here to be your partner to work with operators to understand the challenges of the, our operators face and to bring new technology, technology that exists but needs to be proven, needs a field trial, needs to have a business, you know, a business case or a use case proven. Okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, we are here to make, to bring you all together to make that up. Okay. So, one of the challenges of the industry is we're not particularly good at identifying the opportunities from all the technologies that are out there. And uh, we are here to help you do that. We're also help you to fund. So we can, part of the role of the Oil and Gas Technology Center is to give away, give away money. So uh, it's not quite as simple as that, to help co-invest in developing the technology that you have, that you believe is just what the industry needs, that we're here to help you. So this is co-funding. We'll help you develop with partners, with your end users, with our operators, with tier one companies, and we'll help you deploy. Any questions? By the way, you know, feel, do feel free at any point to uh, ask a question. This is meant to be interactive. So, what are the challenges that we face in the sort of digital arena within oil and gas? You know, what, what we see is that data exists, data exists in actually high, you know, huge quantities, but actually often it's in silos. It's in silos within companies, within departments, within assets, and also within the basin, you know, it's in silos in companies. So how can we start to address that? Business processes generally are unintegrated. So one of the challenges with data is data integration to make a process work. And, you know, I think you all recognize that. And there's huge opportunity if we can actually get some of our processes to be digitized and more effective. And a bit of what I mentioned before, as an industry, we're not very good at picking up opportunities to more technologies, technologies that can help move the whole conversation forward in terms of what we're trying to achieve, identifying, evaluating, and either, you know, proving the concept or failing. So the idea of failing fast, especially in the digital arena and other industries, they're very good at doing that. We're not so good as an industry at doing that. I think you'll find it's very difficult often for a small company with a good product to get get in front of people to get things tested to get things running and you know that's i think it's something we really want to address as a as an industry and it's you know one of the things that is a challenge that we're trying to address yeah um, isn't being unlocked isn't accessible what what, so, what are the what are the key barriers to unlocking that data beyond money in terms of management attitude to sharing data? I, uh, that's a very good question. Um, I think some of the bigger barriers are, you know, technologies, you know, as we all understand, is almost the easy bit, right? So there, there is a general discussion around the change that needs to happen to make technology work. I think there is barriers around, um, you know, the actual silos that I mentioned is usually data stores or applications. Um, I think there is just, you know, there is a, there is new technologies will often be so transformative. You need a new commercial model. You need a new operating philosophy. And that's very difficult in our regulated 
um, environments to, to, to move forward. And I think there's other things around, you know, it, it, it standards. So if you look at other industries and how they, how they do implement technologies quite quickly, it's because they do have standards. And one analogy I always use is the airline industry. So and they have IATA as a sort of industry um, organization. They can pick up and decide on new standard technology and drive it through the industry quite well. Um, you know, and they work at it and it takes them time, but they can do it quite quickly. We're not very good at that. So I think standards is another one of those barriers. But great question. Any more questions while we're here? No? So the opportunity, if as an industry, we can transform using digital technologies, there is quite a lot of upside. You know, we believe that from a productivity or removing downtime from equipment, we can improve performance of our plants, you know, beyond the 95% level. We can increase production by at least 2 to 5%. And safety, you know, if you're moving people from inherently safe, safe, unsafe environments to other environments, um, taking people from offshore, put them onshore, remote management, you know, it has an effect on safety. And definitely we can reduce our cost and our OPEX through using, uh, using digital technologies. Um, it's often the challenge with di digital type solutions that it's not immediately clear exactly how you associate the output of the value with something like production. You know, there's many things that influence production. There's many things that influence uh, uptime of a plant. Uh, cost is usually a little bit easier, but it's still quite challenging. So there has to be a little bit of a belief, and maybe that's another one of the barriers, the willingness to change, that will willingness to adopt and uh, try new things. But, uh, you know, the opportunity is there. Actually, I was going to have this slide first, so we'll see if I can manage this. So digital, what does digital mean? To you, because uh, we have a number of areas that we work. So if you talk, choose asset integrity, I think pretty much everyone understands what it is and, you know, the scope. But if you talk digital, what does that mean? I get that question asked a lot. I ask, you know, I'm asked that question a lot. Digital. Okay, Steve, so what are you actually working on? So I was wondering if anyone had an idea what they would consider digital. No? So perhaps it's... Uh, you know, it's a drone, or it's VR, or it's Internet of Things, or it's Bitcoin, you know, uh, it's robots. So practically anything you can think of could be considered digital, I think. You know, mobility, we've got a few stands here with some mobile devices. These are all digital, but I think, you know, and it, what we work on is any of these things that will actually have an in, impact on the industry and the outcome. So we have broken digital down into a number of themes, and that's what I wanted to show you. Next, so we are focusing on five themes which are outcome-based, which are the digitally enabled supply chain. So the supply chain, I think we can all agree, and I'd be interested if anyone disagrees, the supply chain for oil and gas could be better. And if you look at other industries, it is far more effective. And, you know, there is plenty of those outcomes that I talked about earlier ready there. Artificially intelligent subsurface. So can we take some of our digital data statistical methods, some AI, some cognitive computing, apply it to sub subsurface data and identify either opportunities from an exploration perspective or other areas, you know, by small bypass areas quickly by using artificial intelligence on subsurface data quickly. So that's another area we're looking at. Specifically, we've been asked by the TLB to, to look at uh, exploration because it'd be great if we could reduce the cycle time for exploration. Uh, it's, a, it's a good requirement. The digitally enabled worker. So this is an area, so this is, not just 
giving our offshore workers or workers in warehouses tablets, you know, wearables. It's all about actually digitally enabling a work process as well. So it's it's it covers all those things. Smart facilities. You know, we someone talked to me about they're worried about their facility becoming self-aware and you know and taking over the world. But I'm not sure, you know, any of our platforms are going to do that. But it'd be great for us to understand what is going on. Uh, you know, this is where we're looking at technologies around uh, condition-based monitoring, digital twins, etc., and optimize production. We believe there is opportunities to using technology to drive some optimization of our system as a whole. And then underlying all those and enabling all those is a digital and data architecture theme. And here is where we try and we're going to look at technologies that can help us use data collectively to try and break some of those silos down. How do we use technology in the cloud? How do we put some of our more interesting data types into cloud technology, for instance? So uh, this is important, I think, to enable some of the collaboration that we believe needs to happen in this area. And, you know, we. We will be looking at technologies that will help us share data around some of our new areas like decommissioning. I don't believe many operators want to sort of compete on how good they are at decommissioning. They want to be able to do it safely, cheaply, and learn from the industry as a whole. So this is a great opportunity for us as an industry to show that we can collaborate, we can use deep data, but how would we do that? How would we set it up? Do we need some technology to help us there? So those are the areas that we're focusing on. We also support, as an enabler, any of the other four solution centers that we have, uh, oil and gas technology center. Um, any, any questions on this? Anything that you think is missing? No, I've obviously covered everything. Okay. So, I mean, I think, you know, it, it's always difficult for us to have a have a conversation around digital. And I'd be interested to see how, you know, talking to other people who are in this sort of digital space and having conversations with the company about, okay, so where should we focus? Digital is such a wide topic. What should we focus on? This was where we, well, this is the themes that we've come up with. And we, are, we put most of our projects within these themes. And we're looking to develop roadmaps that will take us to a, a vision of what, that would deliver at the end of the day and looking at the technologies that will get us there. So we're looking at things that will have an immediate impact, but we also really looking for technologies that will transform the industry. So we're trying to do a bit of both of those things. Um, okay. So that was the bit. So we are already, you know, digital as a solution center, oil and gas technology center has been going for about three, three or four months. We're, we're just getting ready for our first call for projects. And we're just getting ready for our first investments in, in, in projects. So we're interested in bringing more things. Um, but we are working already. The technology leadership board gave us some stairs on things to work on initially. And, and they are marine logistics. So this sits in that digitally enabled supply chain theme I talked about. We're also looking at an exploration machine learning project and, we're, and, and other projects that are designed for working on that, you know, that exploration theme, reducing the life cycle uh, for exploration. Next up, I mean, we work with many companies on all the themes, but next up, we're really looking at the digital worker area. So that's events that we're going to be holding at Oil and Gas Technology Center to, to look at that digital worker theme and visualize, data visualization and analytics. So I don't know how many of you have been involved in projects that, that have used analytics on data that you already have. And actually how relatively easy it is once you have the data there to, to do some pretty fantastic stuff. So we're looking at how do we help industry get the data into a place where they can apply analytics and also how you can then use and develop analytics to work on that data. It's really about rapidly identifying opportunities, looking at the portfolio of 
keep, you know, there is a lot of stuff out there. We are pretty good at innovating as an industry. It's just we're not very good at rapidly prototyping and pushing them through and getting the results quick. So that is, I think, where we play a, you know, play a key role. So that's it. Rap rapidly identify and screen innovations, applications. In the digital space, especially, you're trying to turn technologies specifics into solutions rather than, you know, the challenge is we will see a tablet, the guys over there, you know, and we'll see some great technology visual visualizing 3D models. But actually, we need to try and put them all together to create solutions. And, that, and another area that we can help with is that working with people to look at problems, actually creating solutions out of technology. Proof of concepts talked about and the opportunity to utilize to scale base and wide, especially in this area of data. I, you know, I really think as an industry, if we can use our data more effectively as a, as a whole, we can do some pretty extraordinary things. And a lot of machine learning and a lot of cognitive computing really needs a lot of data to crunch to get results. So there are plenty of ways we could do that and still keep ownership of our own data as an operator or, or as a, as someone who's contributing data. So to work with us, what we really like is challenges. So if you've got a challenge, you know, you've got a problem as an operator, you've got a challenge as you think you've solved as an as a innovator, come to us. I mentioned a bit about solutions. We, we enable and catalyze solutions. All you need is challenges, solutions, maybe ideas, and you're really after trials. And if you want, you, if you're as an operator, you want to do trials, you're looking for, you know, you've got a problem, you want to do something, get involved with us. We have a membership model, which I haven't really talked about. So we have people join the solution centers as members. Um, in, the, in the digital solution center, we've got eight so far, and we're working on you know, bringing more on board. If you are a member, you get to influence some of the things that we work on within those themes. And you maybe even get to change those themes. And that's part of the role. So we welcome members. You don't have to be a member to get to put forward a project. Um, if you do a project with us, it almost makes sense to become a member because you can pay your fee through your contribution to the project. But uh, come and talk to us. Come and join us. As a member, you will get to see what, what else is going on in the, digital, in the solution center, and you can influence and steer direction. And I think that's just about it. Yeah. So any questions? Hi, uh, uh, great presentation. Um, you're obviously looking for solutions uh, to solve problems across the industry, as opposed for, for one particular provider or for one particular customer. So when a solution is developed through your model, where does things like IPR sit? So um, intellectual property rights, you know, anyone who brings IP to a project to work in the OGT, they retain the IP. So I think that's a good question, maybe something I should cover. So as a general rule, you know, IP stays with the, guy, the, the guys that bring, bring the IP to the, to, the, you know, to, the, to the game. The other thing is when we do contribute money, we don't want the money back, you know. We don't want equity, you know. So it, it's a different model than you might get from, from other funding agencies or other technical incubators. So we're here primarily to move the whole discussion, to move technology forward for the benefit of the UK continental shelf and maximize economic recovery. But, you know, we're not interested in taking your IP off you. There is, you know, in the cases where we're working together as a, what we call a portfolio project, where we may have a challenge and we have multiple people involved, IP then is a discussion for the people involved in the project. So, but basically, if you bring IP, it's yours and you retain it. Uh, Steve, I was wondering about the formulation of these projects that you were talking about. Some of these technologies are iterative. Some of them are really transformational. Who's specifying those projects? Is it the members or is there another panel that's uh, putting together the definition of the statement of work for the projects and desired outcomes? 
Okay, so, so if ever, did everyone hear the question? So we, we have a portfolio of projects. If you bring a project, who defines whether it gets funded or goes ahead or the scope? Yeah, that's a good, um, put that down. Um, so it is in a number of ways. So, and it depends on the routes that we get. So if you have, you come with an operator and yourself and you want to test something and prototype it, you know, the scope is then decided between us. And, it, you know, there are things that affect it. There is state aid rules that we need to, to follow when we give out uh, state money, government money, um, which is appropriate. And that, that, so the amount we can fund as a percentage of the project differs depending on the size of the people involved and whether it's, you know, whether it's research or it's prototyping. So there are some aspects of that. Essentially, we just work on the scope that's required. If we believe that, you know, you need to really develop a sort of, you need to do some studies, some initial work to identify the scope that's appropriate, then, you know, we can deliver in phases as well. So we're quite willing to have a number of projects that has a first phase and then a second phase and a third phase. So building towards a transformational thing. Um, otherwise, we will, you know, the members will decide. So we, we end up with a portfolio of projects. We do, we do calls for solutions to a specific problem. Then we, then we have people provide, obviously, a proposal. And then we, go, we have a steering committee. We could be made up of members plus industry who then help us decide which projects should go forward. And then again, we might look at the scope. Is it being too ambitious? You know, people will ask for a lot of money. So then you, if it's a lot of money, then we'll break it down into to smaller chunks, maybe and phase it. So it is, a, I guess it's on the fly, um, whatever's appropriate. So any other questions? Mark, I feel like I'm shaving, you know. So any, any other questions? Well, okay, then I think we'll finish that there. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, if you, you know, you do have other questions and you want to talk in more detail, then I'm on the stand now for the for at least until about three o'clock. So come and have a chat. Great. Thank you very much.